Hi everybody, I'm Joey. Well, sorry about uh, not having many projects come out at the moment. Things are, are really hectic with uh, the house build just about to start. And so yes, I will be doing a video series on that. Um, I'm not sure still exactly how that's going to work, but um, I'm going to film parts of it anyway. Um, it, I thought you know, I get a lot of uh, emails asking for plans and cut lists and all sorts of things, which you know I'm happy to give away any drawings I have. Um, but usually it's just in the form of a SketchUp 3D model, and that's what I give the client, gives them some idea of what they're actually going to receive. And um, so I thought I'd kind of maybe walk you through the process of why I don't have cut lists and really accurate plans because um, I think some people think you need those things and um, look, so I'll go through my process a little bit. So number one, a client calls me up, let's say, and they might want a workbench like this, uh, assuming I haven't made one before. Um, so first thing I'm going to say is what size is it going to be and so I'm already constrained by the size the client wants and so that really helps having constraints um, and so in my case because I designed this um, workbench I happen to know that the timber I wanted to use for the top comes from 4.8 meter lengths so cut them in half 2.4 that's how long my, my bench is going to be. Uh, I've got no offcuts that way and it's a pretty good length. So everything started from that I'm going to have 2.4 meter long bench and I don't know, I've ended up with about 700 deep and that's where I'm going to go. So once I've got my SketchUp model pretty much sorted, it's pretty much what I'm going to make. I need to start thinking about, well, as I'm drawing the model I'm also thinking about critical joints how is this point going to join into this point are there any fancy kind of joinery techniques I want to put into this um, in the case of this uh, workbench I put the sliding dovetail in to join the legs or join the top to the legs and um, so that was something that I had to kind of work around right from the start and and there were kind of knock-on effects for, for the design from that so the next thing, I need to work out how much timber and I need for the job. And usually just measuring off the SketchUp model works just fine. So I'll make a, a list of all the parts I need and with their rough dimensions, I'm slightly oversized to what I need, and take them to the timber yard and I'll pick out the timber and actually sketch on roughly, really roughly, just measure out with uh, chalk or crayon on the plank wood this, this part is for a leg, this part is for uh, a stretcher, rah rah, the usual. Uh, that way, and actually write, the, write what it is on each of the pieces of timber. That way when I come back to the workshop, and maybe the next day or in two days time, start working on that project, um, I don't have to re-measure out what timber I actually bought and what I forgot I was going to use this part for this part. It's just written there, I can cut it off and start working on it straight away. So, next thing to do is to dress the stock. <clears throat> so let's say I'm working with 40mm rough sawn. Now typically I'll get 35mm finished out of that. But sometimes the piece of timber is looking you know, perfectly dressed and I'm only at 38, um, 38mm. So do I need to keep planing down to 35 Well that's going to be up to what I think it looks like. And um, you know, if I think maybe it is actually looks slightly better, chunkier, um, I'll just stop planing at 38. Or vice versa, and that I might plane down to 35 mil and then think, oh, you know what? It's too big. I think I'll take a few more mil off it through the planer. Now, if I'm working, or if I have a set of really strict plans um, with all these dimensions measured out, um, every time I make an on the fly decision, I'm going to have to go back and recalculate or well, there's all these knock-on effects from just a few mil here and there is going to make a big difference when it comes to actually assembling things uh, or a massive difference so I find it's much easier to dress all the pieces that are the same 
for instance, all the legs, I'll dress them all so they're the same. Dress all the boards for the top so they're the same. Dress all the timber for the draw sides, they're the same. So there's no um, incompatibility with each like piece. Um, but then when it comes to assembling, it's just a matter of assemble the frame, for example, the legs and the top, and then I can measure between the legs, oh, that's how big the carcass has to be. So once you've got critical dimensions, uh, really all I ever come into the workshop with is a scrap of paper with a box drawn on it, because pretty much everything is a box, and it's like total width, total height, and that's pretty much all the dimensions I have, and from there I'm just measuring off the piece as I make the piece. And it's much easier than having to try and stick to a plan, and then when something goes wrong and suddenly you need to cut something, you start freaking out because you're not sure what the knock-on effects are of that plan. So I have to find it way easier to work kind of on the fly. Um, and it's way less stressful, I think. So all this is to say, in the end, yes, I'm happy to give away drawings of, uh, well, just pretty much every project I have uh, will have a, a SketchUp model for it. I'm happy to give them away. You will just need to do a little bit of homework yourself to either modify the size or work out materials yourself and what materials they're going to be. And if you need extra help for details, most likely I'll have the video of it so you can watch it in slow-mo or click me an email as well. Um, so if you want uh, some drawings or something I've made, um, contact me through my website and fill out the contact us form. It's much easier for me to reply that way. Um, YouTube is difficult to re-find the comment. For example, if someone sends a comment through, it might pop up on my phone. I'll look at it during the day and think oh, I'll answer that later on tonight. Um, and then I can never find the comment again. Um, sometimes comments just disappear. I don't understand how YouTube works. It has a mind of its own for comments. So, if you've left me a comment and I haven't replied, it's probably because I can't find the comment or it's disappeared from somewhere. Um, anyhow, that's another problem. For those of you who are interested, I mentioned I was making a bath last week for the new house. I started that so early because I know it's going to be a long process and I just want to get it done because uh, it's going to be the hardest piece of furniture I have to make, I think, and I want to get it out of the way. Um, so here is a really quick sneak peek. There is a video coming when it's finished, but this is what it looks like at the moment. It's obviously uh, segmented cedar and there really is a heck of a lot of epoxy more epoxy than the cedar probably by the time I'm finished and um, it looks pretty rough and ready but it really is like a segmented piece for a turning and that all the rough edges are going to get ground off and shaped and hopefully made to look very nice once it's all glued up so I'm probably about halfway up I guess anyhow thanks for watching um, I am, I have got a bunch of videos kind of half finished thereabouts. I'm just waiting for photos for some things and you know bits and pieces to happen. But I will um, endeavour to have a video out soon. And although we've got the house build coming up, so there's going to be a whole series probably once a week of those coming out. So hang tight. I'm trying to get you guys um, some more content. Just takes some time. See ya.